Hi, I'm Karen with KarenConradHome.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. How many of you have dreamed about redecorating your entire house, but you just haven't had the budget to complete it? Well, today I'm going to show you how to give your room and your home a whole new look with a limited budget. And you are going to be very surprised to see some of the tips and tricks that we're going to use to accomplish that. back. If you remember from our last program, we were talking about redecorating a home in the mountains of Colorado, totally redoing every room on a budget. And so today we are going to pick up with the dining room. So I'm going to show you how to incorporate the palette that we started with on a budget into several pieces to create a beautiful dining room table and setting. And I'm going to show you how we use the things that were already found in my home and how we designed and created some pieces just for this table. One of the tricks that I use as a designer to keep things in budget is really once you choose your staple products or that one thing that you're going to build things around. I find things that work uh, that I can make look completely custom. So what that does is it takes the home and it makes it look like you have spent thousands of dollars on trying to incorporate things into that one design look. But in fact, we're taking very simple things that we can find on a daily basis at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, even the dollar store and bring it into this palette and make it look like a top designer look. So let's go ahead and get started to look around what we have on the table. First of all, I've got very basic white dishes. And these were dishes that I had, and as you can tell, they don't even perfectly match. But actually, that's something that you want to do uh, to bring a designer look. There's something about mixing and matching textures and tones and colors, and that imperfection that actually when you're finished, it makes it look really high end. So we've got these simple dishes, and then underneath we're gonna be using black chargers, as you can see. I guess mine's a little scraped up there, uh, but those are something that you can actually purchase at Hobby Lobby or even Walmart for even as little as two to three dollars. Now, if you remember here, I had this piece of paper out and really what this is, is um, from scrapbooking. And so I took this picture because I thought it coordinated really well with that hound's tooth that we are starting with and I created this tray. So again, I went to Hobby Lobby. You can find the pictures and frames are on sale 50% off every other week. So I picked one in the orange tones uh, because again, remember, I'm gonna take something simple and bring it into my color scheme to make it look very expensive. So I uh, cut the, the paper and I put it on the inside for the tray. And then um, I had my son put these very inexpensive handles on the side that you can get at Home Depot and had them put it in the side for me so that it functions as a tray. So you're gonna see me use these a lot because it really brings things together in a room. Okay, so next I bought some of the little pumpkins. Remember I had that big pumpkin and I said what you can find in nature to go with what you're working on is always such a nice addition. And so I got these little pumpkins and I'll show you how to arrange those. And then I went and uh, I actually went to Hobby Lobby and they had these napkin rings, but they didn't look like this when I purchased them. Um, as you know, a lot of the stores, they really have their seasonal things on clearance. And so I bought these on clearance, but they were the bright brass. So the, you know, the harsh brass that just screams cheap. <laughs> so I bought them cheap. I didn't spend much money, but then I took this acrylic paint that I was showing you in the copper tones, and then I just applied it on the top and even around the inside, if you can see that, and it gives it a really beautiful look. And uh, then what I did too is with the vase, uh, I ran to Walmart and I do this a lot. This is actually like their basic glass vase. It's like $4, but um, I don't like using clear glass because you can see all the stems and things. So what I do 
is I take that clear glass and I apply paint and I make a designer vase. So as you can see, I incorporated two colors. I took the copper and I took the black and I combine them in brush strokes. Kind of what I like to do is I just take it like this and then I'll just apply it like this. So it'll be like back and forth and I'll go two colors and then let it dry and then bring it back in again. So you will be quite amazed when you see what this actually looks like when we're completed. It looks great. So there is the vase. Put that back here. All right, so next is what do we put in the vase? So again, um, I'll have to see if Hobby Lobby will have to give me some commission or something here, but I go to Hobby Lobby and they've got their florals 50% off every other week. So I make sure that I uh, know what I'm buying and I go on the week where it's 50% off. And I just picked out some pieces um, that I felt looked actually quite real. Okay, one of the things with florals, I've never been a fan of bringing a bunch of different colors in. I really like monochromatic florals and I like those that look real that I could actually add real twigs into and it would look fine. So I found these and uh, these are $4.99, so I got these for $2.50. And then I found these, which were marked $6.99, so I got those for $3.50. And I'm gonna show you how to put together a nice centerpiece using these florals. All right, next, uh, I have these dollar um, wine glasses that I was telling you about last time. And as you can see, all these colors are starting to coordinate. So we'll be using those. Next, I wanted to have some candles by each place setting. And I wanted it to go with the rest of the things that we're using. And so for 74 cents, you can buy these clear um, votive holders. And again, I took the copper paint and I just applied it on here. And when it's lit, it just gives it a beautiful shimmer. And if we put that by each place setting, it looks really special. Okay, and then most of you have this. It's just your basic uh, dessert cover. And um, I thought, hey, I am going to take dessert that we're actually going to use and incorporate it into the decorating. And so I got these orange and green cupcakes and I just kind of put them real close together so that it kind of looks like an art piece and covered it. And you're going to see that as a design element in the table. And then these are something that I just picked up. You can go to thrift stores or um, you, know, you can pick up candlesticks for not very much money. And I really like the look of these. It was kind of rustic, it had the, the, um, the swirls here that kind of went with some of the other things we're incorporating. And with that, I picked out some really nice pumpkin candles. Um, again, these are from Walmart. I really like the smell because it's a natural smell and those will really work nice on our table. And then I had the mugs that I had with my dishes. So you'll see how we use those. And then I did two sets of napkins. Now, I am not the best seamstress, I assure you, but anybody can sew napkins. So I actually had this material, and if you see, it kind of goes right with that color scheme. And really, all you do is you just cut up squares or rectangles, and you just press it. Let me just show you. And you just um, do like double over. So you do, you fold it and fold it again, and then just sew around the edge, and voila! you have got a napkin. So that adds a nice designer look. Everybody likes to have a cloth napkin. It feels like you're at a fancy restaurant. Um, and so that's one option. And I'm also going to show you another option where we use the material that I had in my original palette. I took that fabric and I did the same thing. I just made those into napkins. So I'm gonna show you um, a few ways to do the napkins and some different looks. So you're gonna see when you start with a black and white like we did with this hound's tooth, it is extremely flexible. So, um, what I really did with that is I took this houndstooth material and again, I'm not a great seamstress, so you can all feel really good about this, uh, but I just simply turned it over once. So if you look at this, I just turned it over once and then when it's down, 
it, you can't tell. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually line it. But when you're sitting at a table, most people aren't going to lift up your runner and look underneath it. So I was able to complete this in like a half hour this morning. You probably noticed that I do have an addition here. Now, when I'm looking at furniture, um, I really try to use everything that's in place. But in this case, this dining room in this house really, it just called for some um, dramatic look dramatic addition. And so I went to American Warehouse Furniture, which uh, is not an expensive store at all. And I found these chairs. They were like $69 each. I could not resist them because if we take this black and white compared to the brown that we had, it is going to add so much to this room. And you're going to see me build on these in other parts of this room and in this house. So I did go ahead and purchase these. So what I'm going to do next for you is I'm going to take all these things off the table and then I'm going to place them on one at a time and show you how to build a dining room table. We are going to put this table together piece by piece so that at home you can do the same thing with the fabrics and the colors that you have chosen. First of all, really the the main staple or the one item that I felt made all the difference with this dining room was starting with this houndstooth fabric. And so uh, I showed you how I sewed it. Not very well. <laughs> you can sew it better. Um, but what I like to do with this is really lay it out where it's not perfect looking. That's just my design style. I like things to have some interest, to have some texture. So what I do is I take the end and I will drape it over one end like this. And then I will do just like various little folds in the fabric to create some interest and some angles. So that's what I'm gonna kind of work here for you. So we've got, and I, I just keep moving it and finding that right angle. And then what it does too, is it sort of gives you some interest with the angles on the table. So instead of it being straight across, it just takes some twists and turns to create interest. All right, next, we're going to put together the flower. So if you remember, this started out as a glass vase. And uh, what I do is I just take the pieces and you wanna think about like, what does this look like in nature? Okay, so in nature, you don't see flowers straight up or twigs straight up. You see them with like a natural bend. So that's what I'm gonna to start to just work as I go. And I'm just gonna check the height. It might be a little tall, so I just bend this there. And then we just kind of go piece by piece and we work it in. And so here's with the leaves, same thing. Kind of bend those out. These are really nice, like these, these are really good quality because you're able to bend them and they curve. They don't just go at a sharp angle. And they've already got some, do you see that? Even like if you look at a willow in nature or you look at twigs, they have curves and this really follows that nicely. So again, I'll check the height and I'm gonna go ahead and bed that down just a little bit. So go ahead and gives it a nice peak you kind of want something towards the top and again I'll just bend that. You see how it's starting to fill out and you know what I'm really satisfied with that so we're going to go ahead and put that in the center. Whoops I'm going to have to move my move this just a tad so it sits really nice. Put that in the center and that is going to be the start for the rest of our table. Okay, it's time to set the table. So we have started with the chargers. And if you remember, I told you I actually got those at Hobby Lobby for like $2.99 each. And there's a lot of different colors, but in this case, black really looks good um, because it, it goes nicely with the houndstooth. And again, it just adds a lot of um, drama and substance to the table. So we'll put our white dishes on the chargers first. Okay, and then next, because we'll be serving a salad, we'll go ahead and put the salad plate on top. So if you remember, these are the ones that, the napkins that I made that went with the green color scheme. And there's a lot of different ways that we can use napkins. This is probably my favorite with the setting that we have. 
is just to take it and bend it back and forth like a fan. And the reason that I'm choosing this is because these leaf holders really sit nice on the plate. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of show you what it looks like here from the front. See, I can have it sort of sit there and fan out and it just creates, I don't know, kind of a lot of color and intrigue on the plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that one there. Okay, next is my dollar store wine glasses. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the right side of each of the place settings. The candle holders that we had painted, we're gonna put on the left so that each of your guests has their own special candle. We'll put that on each place setting. Okay, and next is my very colorful cupcakes. As I said, it's dessert, but do you see how that actually adds to the design? And then next, the tray that I had made, we're going to go ahead and put over here for people that would like to have coffee at the end of the night. So I'd like to make room for something a little bit unexpected. And in this case, it's going to be the little pumpkins. So what we do is I always take either, you know, really you wanna do three. I mean, you could maybe do five, but I kind of have a rule of one or three on items. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these over and then we'll put these pumpkins right here, kind of angled and um, just to kind of go off the side, a little bit imperfect, but again, it just brings a really nice pop to the table and some natural interest. And then I've just got a bottle of wine here and I'm gonna put that right in there. So the wine bottle has a home and also um, it just uh, looks really nice like it's kept and it really showcases that for you. And then our last piece here that we're going to add is the candles. And then we'll add the other one on this side. Excuse me. All right, and there we go. Now it's time to put the very finishing touches on the table. I'll light the last candle here. And there it is, it's all put together, all the pieces and parts. And as you can see, I made sure we got all the chairs. Isn't that a nice dramatic look? But yet it's got some nature which really creates a comfort when you sit at a table. I call this my non-spooky Halloween dining set. So join us for my next video where we're going to move into the living room and we're gonna take this same look, same color palette, and we're gonna show you and present it in a living room and it's gonna tie it all together. I assure you, you will be happy that you watched. My name is Karen with KarenConradHome.com and I invite you to go to my website and download a free ebook that gives you many more ideas on bargain buys for a designer book. Thank you for joining us.